Hey, it's Lauren. This is an excerpt from my conversation with Sunil Godsey. To enjoy the full episode, just head to the show notes and follow the link. And the best way that I can share with you what these four types of intuition are is through a case study of a non-believer. So one of the guys I interviewed was a fellow by the name of John Rothschild. This guy was an investment banker, you know, data spreadsheets ruled his life. So when I phoned him up to say, hey, listen, John, you're one of my first interviews. I want to talk about intuition. He goes, Sunil, I don't know what we're going to talk about because that doesn't exist. Yeah, you know, and I said, really? I said, yeah, I, I mean, come on down. I'll give you an hour, but intuition doesn't exist. I don't know what we're going to talk about. But um, anyways, let, you know, we'll talk about intuition for five minutes and maybe the rest of the 55 minutes we'll have a latte and catch up. I haven't seen you for a while. So, I, I, so I'm driving down to see John. I'm wondering, okay, this is going to be a real short interview. Uh, I turn on the camera. And so I start, I start with these signals and I start telling John, John, there's a CEO who's run two multi-million dollar businesses. He sees these omens and John goes, yeah, Sunil, um, like, yeah, omens, this stuff. I, I really, you know what? I, I'd love to shake this guy's hand. I would really like to meet this guy, but listen, any decision comes down to learning and experience. And so now we're going to start getting into the four types of intuition. And so I told John, well, listen, John, one of the four types is called experiential intuition. So if you look at your brain like a, a, an iceberg, the subconscious part of your brain is underwater, which is the 90%, and the 10% is above water. So you're born with intuition. And so when you're born, you have anywhere from five to 6,000 events a day. When you're older, 28 to 35,000 events per day. Each one of these things, all the experiences, both good and bad, all your learning, both formal and informal uh, of yours and others that are relevant to you, all get put into the subconscious area of your brain like a library every single day, thousands of times a day, so that when you get a signal, that signal is packed with experience and learning from your past. So if you get a positive signal, your intuition is saying, hey, Sunil, listen, you've had these skills before. You need to, you can, you can do this. I know you've done this before. You have the, uh, the ability. That's why I'm giving you a positive signal. And conversely, if you look at a negative signal, it's going to go, Sunil, uh, 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 somewhere in the past, the same type of decision didn't go so well. So I'm going to tell you that not to take this decision because you're making the same mistake again. And so that's what those, those, uh, the, the, that's experiential intuition. And in some cases, your intuition, your experiential intuition has you go against the data. And so John says, well, that's really funny, Sunil. I have an example of that. And I said, okay, well, tell me that. So John was in the business of doing, uh, running franchises. Uh, and so he put a franchise location in like a McDonald's or a Wendy's or a in and out Burger, things like that. And so his team would look at a franchise location and measure it on a scale of zero to 10. And a nine out of 10 meant that he would put a franchise in. And so they look at things like demographics of the area, traffic patterns, and the development that's coming up. And so there was this really crappy area of Toronto, Canada, and his team looked at this and they did an assessment and it came at five and a half out of 10. So on paper, there's no way that they shouldn't even be close to making a decision to put a franchise there. So now we're going to get into the second of the two, four, sorry, called situational intuition. So John walks into this area. He starts looking around and he says, something is telling me that we need to put a location here. And now he says, perhaps my intuition. So I've got him to start using the word. And he says, perhaps my intuition, I'm not sure, but I think I'm going to put a location here. And he goes against his team's advice, listens to himself. And that franchise location ended up becoming one of the most successful under that brand, uh, under the different brands he had uh, called the beer market. And so now I think John is starting to get it. His wheels are turning. He's starting to appreciate what intuition is. And then at some point, John, his purpose changes. 